do 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 it's Cam Dork. Hello everyone, this is Cam Dork, and welcome to the start of something a bit different. Today we're going to be starting a new adventure. We're going to be doing a Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program in Career Mode. In case you're wondering what this game's all about, well, Kerbal Space Program is all about you becoming a master chef and cooking... No, of course. It's about controlling a space program for Kerbals. And who are they? Well, they're these guys right here. The, these little guys floating above the planet Kerbin, which looks a lot like Earth. And this game, the reason why I love it so much is because... There's a lot to do with science in this game, and I am a scientist, hence the name Chemdork. I'm a chemist, though, not a rocket scientist, but this game allows you to, kind of everybody, to become a little bit of a rocket scientist. Now, it's it's kind of a, a difficult game if you don't know sort of anything about rocket science and trajectories and such, so the part of this, this, uh, this Let's Play is going to be actually kind of showing you a bit about some of the mechanics of the game and trying to help those who might be having problems getting into orbit, for example, going to the moon, going to Minmus, going to explore the system, docking, all these other fun stuff you can do in the, in the game. Uh, we're going to be doing them all, pretty much, and I uh, hope we're going to have a lot of fun. So, let's start a new career. Let's go uh, Chemdork LP career. Let's give ourselves a flag, and um, I actually uploaded a picture, our Chemdork logo. Well, it is a Chemdork logo. It is now a Chemdork logo with Mega Man on it. I think it's pretty cool. So let's uh, let's do a career in normal mode. We don't have any mods installed. The idea behind this is kind of like when you learn how to calculate and, and add and subtract and do division. At first you learn how to do it longhand and then you use a calculator. Well, maybe later on we're going to bring mods in, but in the beginning let's learn how to do these things just sort of organically with the tools at hand in the program. So, welcome to it. This is the Kerbal Space Center. I'm not going to go too much into a tutorial. You'll notice that the um, that the text in this game is a bit small, so you might want to watch this on H in HD. If you cannot watch it in HD, though, uh, not to worry. I'll be sort of explaining the things that actually matter in terms of the text, so thanks, I've got it. Gene Carmen was just welcoming us to the Space Center. So just kind of like getting the picture of the layout here, you have a runway where we can launch our space planes, but also just normal planes, and we'll be building some normal airplanes as well. It's actually pretty fun to fly them here and land them on the runway. It's kind of like a flight sim, and sort of. Um, but anyways, there's also the launch pad here, which is a pile of dirt. You'll soon see it's just a pile of dirt. But uh, don't worry, we'll make it a little better. Uh, the big building right here, this main building that you see, it's the VAB. This is the, the big building here where we build our rockets. So before we get into a bunch of things, we can we can do stuff in each one of these buildings, but uh, for now the one of interest we're going to look at is Mission Control. This is where we're going to accept some contracts, which are effectively quests. Things that will give us some of these resources at the top. So. Uh, the first two we're going to accept. One is gather scientific data from Kerbin. Absolutely, yes. And the other one is launch our first vessel. So the whole idea behind this sort of in career mode especially is that you want to have a progression through the game of kind of the, the, the natural way to progress from maybe first launching a rocket, then getting into orbit, then getting to do a flyby to the moon, putting some satellites, eventually landing a Kerbin or a Kerbal on the moon and then going to different planets, building space stations. It's kind of this natural progression that you need to go through, and you do that by collecting science at each of the places that you're going to visit with different pieces of scientific equipment. And they give us this resource right here on the upper right, and that is science. And you basically spend it right here in the Research and Development Building, where this is our tech tree. So right now, we are here, and we kind of want to fill out everything. And in order to do that, we need to get a lot of this science. So for the first part, when you just start, you're only given six parts to build a ro rocket. You can't really build anything that significant with this, these six parts. Pretty much allows you to get off the ground and kind of do that. So we're going to use that to build our first rocket and then progress through this pretty, well, pretty consistently, I should say. Not necessarily quickly, just consistently. Um, so, our first contract is to, uh, and yes, there's other resources here, the middle one is reputation, by the way. Basically, don't don't blow up your rockets and don't kill Kerbals, and then you'll be fine. And the one over on the left is cash. You do have to worry about this a bit, and this is what you really use to, first of all, build your rockets, but also then upgrade your buildings, more importantly. 
and our contracts will give us some um, cash, a little reputation boost, and science. So, our first contract was to launch a rocket and gather scientific data. So let's go ahead into the VAB now and start that. Uh, so, Werner von Kerman welcomes us to the Vehicle Assembly Building. Well, thank you, Werner von Kerman. Uh, welcome, and let's start building. So we're just going to start out building a real simple uh, rocket. We only have six parts, like I said. There's these, these part list is pretty, pretty sparse at this point. So let's go ahead and throw a command pod here. Uh, and that's uh, pretty cool. This is where the you can see our flag is going to be on each one of our spacecraft. That's really cool. I like it. So yeah, you can up, you can upload your own uh, picture files to make your own. And in fact, hey, look at that. There's the flag as well. If you want to see a bigger version, and it's even up here. How nice. Uh, but anyway, um, so this is the command pod. A Kerbal is going to sit in here. Automatically, it throws one of your Kerbinauts in. And in this case, it's going to be Jebediah Kerman. He is a pilot. Uh, we have different different types of pilots that we can put in there, or di different types of astronauts we can per put in there. They should be Kerbal knots, right? Right? I don't know. But anyways, there's different types of astronauts you can put in here. In this case, Jeb is a pilot, which means he flies things a little better than others, uh, which is fine at first. So this is going to be our command pod. It's going to take Jeb up, but he's also going to fall back down. And in order to stop and slow his fall back down, we're going to need a parachute. So let's smack that right on top. Uh, we'll be able to control when that opens. And then we need to go up, so what do we use to go up? Well, let's throw an engine on there. Now this is a solid fuel booster, a solid rocket engine. It um, it works kind of like, just picture uh, a stick of dynamite, kind of like that, or at least a slow burning firework, where you light one end and once it starts, you don't stop it. It just, it's on. So this thing is on at one power, and it's on until it burns through all its fuel. You cannot shut it off, you cannot throttle, but it gets a lot of power in there. So it's useful for our first flight. And this is all we need to satisfy the launch uh, contract, but we also want to gather scientific data. And science system in this game is kind of, uh, kind of I'll, I'll briefly describe the science system. So how science works in this game is basically all science has two parts to it. It's the actual experiment, coupled with a location for the experiment. So you can do a crew report science experiment at the launch pad, and that gives you a different amount of science, and you can do that differently than if you're doing a crew report in air. But at the same time, you can do another type of observation of a science experiment, so say a mystery goo observation, which we'll do in a second, uh, at the launch pad, and that is a different combination of science experiment and location. And each unique combination of science experiment and location gets you more science. The farther away you are from the Kerbal Space Center, the more science you get. The more complicated the science experiment, the more science you get. But you, if you try to do the same uh, combination of science experiment and location, together again you get no science or drastically reduced science until eventually you, you get no more science for that. So you, could, you, so you have to go through all different combinations. So let's put on that piece of scientific equipment. It's a mystery goo containment unit. So hopefully I did an okay job explaining that. Uh, we're gonna change the symmetry. We can hit the X key to cycle through the symmetry mode. We'll do it in a dual symmetry, but we, we, we can throw as many as we want on here. Uh, but let's, uh, let's just throw it right here. There you go. So now each one of these can do science, and if we right click on the part it says science experiment, it has observe mystery goo, that's the experiment you can do. And we'll be able to do that at various locations and get science. Uh, likewise, the command pod itself, I right click on the command pod and scroll down, you can see science experiment, you can do a crew report in the command pod. So in this vessel as it stands, we can do one, two, three types of observations. All right, we're ready to go, just about. So we have a pilot, we have a thing to go up, we can slow ourselves to go down, and we put some science on. The one last thing we're going to think about is the staging over here on the right. This is what happens when you push the space bar. So when we push the space bar, this whole thing in zero is going to happen, which is start the rocket, which is good, and open the parachute, which is bad. We don't want that to happen at the same time, we want it to happen separately. So let's create another stage, throw this down here, so that way when we push the space bar first, the thing on the bottom happens, even though it says one, it actually happens before zero, because uh, it's on the bottom. So it happens first, and then when we want to, we can open the chute by pushing the space bar again. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and launch and start collecting science, because again, we can do this right here on the launch pad, which, once again, 
is a pile of dirt that looks like it's seen some better days. Um, we'll be upgrading this rather shortly, but not quite in this episode. But first, let's go ahead and do a crew report. Let's click that crew report button, and we get a crew report from the launch pad. So this gives you an idea about, again, crew report is the type of science or the science experiment, and launch pad is the location. So it's science experiment, location. Cool. So crew report from the launch pad gives us a measly 1.5 science, but let's do it anyway. Now, right now, if we wanted to do another crew report, we would overwrite this existing one, which we don't want to do. We want to keep that one. So how do we do another crew report? Well, we can do a little trick. We can do what's called an EVA, which is extra vehicular activity. I think that's what it stands for. Uh, but Jeb comes out, and if we right-click on him, he can actually do another bit of science, which is an EVA report from the launch pad. And again, same location, different type of science. So we get 2.4 science for that. And how we get to do another crew report is we actually take the crew report out and store it somewhere inside the command pod in a different location, I guess, uh, as data, so that there's room for another crew report. Um, that's how you have to understand it, because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. So let's take that data and then store it back in, or we can just climb right back in and it'll store it automatically, and now we can do another crew report. It still shows we get science, but last next uh, next time we launch a rocket, we'll see we get we get no science for it, because it, um, it only calculates when you've already done science, after you've returned all those experiments back to the uh, to the Kerbal Space Center. So we can do another piece of science here, which is going to be the a mystery goo observation, but we're going to wait until we're in the air to do one of those, and then we're going to wait until we're on the ground to do the second. So let's take off now. We'll enable SAS, which helps us be a little bit more stable, and we'll hit the space bar. So let's go. And I'm going to actually head a little bit to the uh, to the east here, try to land kind of right here on the on the beach. All right, so let's go. Three, two, one, launch! Ooh, okay, oh, let's let's head this way. Okay, so we're in the mid, we're in the air, but uh, we'll wait, we'll wait until we're stopped. So there you go. See, we already burned through all our fuel, and we're going too fast for the parachute. That's why it's red. While we're here in the air, let's observe the mystery goo. Eh, we get a lot of science for that. Again, a mystery goo observation is the science. While flying at Kerbin is the place. We'll keep that experiment. We can actually do a crew report here, which is good. So now we go crew report while flying over Kerbin Shores. I'll we'll keep that experiment. There we go. We're still we're still heading up by the vertical speed indicator, but you see this is coming down, which indicates that we are slowing down, in fact. And we're going to be heading down in a moment. So let's uh, let's just open the parachute. That's fine. And uh, it'll fully deploy once we're below a thousand. But we went to uh, eight thousand meters, just about. Well, let's just accelerate time here. I just want to get to the get to landing. We might, uh, yeah, we're gonna fall into on the beach, on Kerbin Shores, as you see here. There we go. So now it's fully opened, and we slow down to quite slow. So let's time accelerate until we're on the ground again, and that'll do it. Yes, this is a first, the first flight. Uh, it's not a space flight. We didn't go into space. We just went up and went down and collected science experiments. So let's didn't yeah we didn't crash. We're we're good. Um, let's actually try to tilt this thing down. No, we can't. Okay, that's okay. Uh, we're going to do another mystery goo observation from Kerbin Shores this time. We get three science. And we cannot do another crew report, but now that we're on the ground, we can do an EVA, do another EVA report, and remember that little trick? We're going to take out all the data, which includes the crew report and the command pod, get back in and do another crew report. So it's like the science shuffle. Now, again, it's a different crew report from before. This is a crew report from Kerbin Shores, not a crew report from the launch pad. So that's all the science we can do. Let's return this and recover this vessel and see what we get. We get a lot of science. Hey, we got 26.3 science earned, a total of 37 now with all the contracts and various milestones we had. Um, we get a little money back for parts. 97.9% um, value recovered, because we recovered just about everything except for our fuel. And uh, Jeb got some experience. That's pretty cool. So we didn't really waste that much money on that one at all. We just gained money. So we get a bunch of contracts complete. We get a bunch of, you know, bunch of, bunch of things we got. So uh, let's go ahead and do mission control again and see. Now, before we go into sort of looking to go into space, let's see if there's some easy money to be had. And in fact... What we want to see is either science experiments to be done 
landed at Kerbin or at the launch site. And what we see is, so this is survey of Kerbin. That's that's not what we want. Splash down at Kerbin is not bad. Um, at the launch site, this one's good. So this one we can do. Um, this one we're going to grab because we're going to test this hammer solid fuel booster at the launch site. And that's it. Okay, we can do this one real quick and real easy. And in fact, we can we can do the stack decoupler test. Splash down too. Yeah, we could, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. We don't, don't, don't worry about it. Um, we're we're just gonna build something real quick to be able to gather this this data. So we're gonna get rid of that for a second. The contract is test this hammer fuel booster. So we don't we haven't researched it yet, but you can you can still use it. It's the thing in blue. Uh, we need to be on Kerbin and at the launch site, and then we just need to test it through the staging sequence. Which means that it just needs to. We just need to hit the space bar. It doesn't mean we have to go anywhere, and that's the key. So we can put a command pod here, and we can stick an engine on the bottom of one. Or in this case, because I'm silly and I want to just prove a point, we're just going to stick it on the top. And what we're going to do is we don't want to go anywhere with this, so we'll just get rid of the fuel. So by getting rid of the fuel, it's not going to actually go anywhere. And when we launch it, we're going to be already on Kerbin, already landed. And uh, if we look at this, we're at the launch site, we're on Kerbin, and it's ready once we hit the space bar. Ta-da! We've successfully completed this contract. Hooray! We got some money and some other stuff. Recover the vessel, we're going to get 100% of the value back. It's a it's a complete win, you know, 100% value. It's a complete win scenario. Uh -huh. So, uh, we can do the splash decoupler splashdown at Kerbin. Maybe we'll do that later. What I want to do now is we're going to escape the atmosphere. So let's go ahead and escape or accept this contract. Now, escaping the atmosphere is more or less the same. We just need to build a bigger rocket for for the most part. Uh, oh, well, yeah, I don't want to go looking in the tracking station, but here it is. Tracking station lets you see a little view of the um, of the Kerbal area. So that's the planet Kerbin, just to give you little bearings. That's the moon, and Kerbin actually has two moons. One moon is nice equatorial orbit. The other moon is called Minmus, and its orbit is a bit at an angle, as you see from the equatorial plane. And then Kerbin is part of a solar system, complete solar system here. So we have a sun, Moho, which is sort of like Mercury, Eve, which is basically a Venus-like planet, uh, Duna, which is a Mars-like planet, Drez over here, it's a, another rocky planet out there, kind of kind of a Saturn-ish, but I don't think it has rings. I've never gone to Drez. Uh, Joule, which is like their Jupiter, nice and big, a lot of gravity, but you can land there. I think, I think you can land there. And uh, and Elu is uh, is the Pluto. So let's um. But that's so that's the solar system. We'll we'll kind of talk a bit in that mode in a in in a moment here. But let's let's build the rocket that can get us into space. Before we do that, though, we want to use up some of the science that we that we gained. So we're gonna get some basic rocketry. We're gonna unlock a liquid fuel engine, which is gonna be very useful. A fuel tank for it, and a bigger solid fuel booster, the one that we just threw on and did a quick easy contract with now we actually can use it and we will in our next spacecraft uh, which will be a spacecraft because we'll go into space um, we're also going to do engineering 101 which gives us a thermometer and great science part um, and you can do repeatable science with it uh, some antenna and a stack decoupler which allows us to separate our spacecraft as we're uh, heading out into space which is very useful and then we have 28 left uh, we can get one of these either more rockets, bigger rockets, um, some wings for stability, or in this case, the smart one when we're going into space here, and that is survivability, which gives us heat shields, which we will need, but not necessarily for this next flight, but it's going to be absolutely necessary a little later on. So the heat shield, uh, we get a barometer, so that's another piece of science equipment, and some uh, thermal seat shields and other kind of stuff we're going we're gonna to use eventually, but not right now. Um, so okay, there we go. And that will allow us to build something that can get into space, but not necessarily into orbit. So right now, we just want to get above the atmosphere and then come right back down through it. Now, the atmosphere itself, if we look at our contract, it says... To escape the atmosphere, breach the atmosphere by flying a vessel to an altitude of 70,000 meters to achieve this goal. So we need to get above 70 kilometers in order to be in space. Um, and in Carvel Space Program, that's like... If the, here's the surface, here's 70 kilometers, this just, like, atmosphere stops at 70 kilometers. Uh, in reality, though, of course, you know, in real life, the atmosphere is, 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 is just um, something that is 
it doesn't have quite so much a hard line of like stopping the atmosphere uh but uh yeah it is that way in kerbal space program don't worry um so let's build a rocket so more or less the same as before this this is a little wacky thing let's get rid of that um and let's build it again pretty much like before we're gonna have a command pod we're gonna do the parachute on top as before uh, we are going to put the science on it, just like before. We'll put those two Mystery Goo containment units and symmetry. And you always want your rocket to be as symmetrical as possible, just because otherwise it's going to have a tendency to, to tip back and forth. Um, we're going to put a barometer on there. In fact, we're going to put two, right, one right here, and um, the other temperature thermometer here. Yeah, we'll put it right here. It's fine. Yeah, that's cool. Right next to each other. Uh, so we got... A lot of science on this thing, and this is going to be what's returning back to the surface of the planet. So we want to put a heat shield on the bottom because this is going to go through the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is going to generate, when we're going fast enough, you generate a lot of friction, which will actually heat your spacecraft and can melt it if you're not careful. In this case, we're not actually going to be going too fast, so quite honestly, you could do this without a heat shield, but we're going to use a heat shield. And, um... At this point in time, I should say, it's smart not to take up what you don't use. So if we're not going to use everything that we're bringing into space, we shouldn't be bringing it. And that comes into play with the heat shield. So if I right click here, we can see we can actually get rid of some of this up later. This is the, the stuff that makes the heat shield work. Heat shield, uh, this heat shield works by the process of what's called ablation. Um, ablation is when you heat a material and that that heat is dissipated through a chemical reaction. So it heats this material and it basically the heat decomposes uh, a chemical here, and that is the ablator. So uh, the amount of that chemical that we bring on the bottom here is going to give us the amount of heating heat shielding that we need. And of course, less means less weight. So if we look right now, our mass is 1.36 tons. If I get rid of this deck down to its almost its minimum, it's 1.18. We don't need much at all for this time. Remember, like I said, in this flight in particular, we're not going too fast at all. We're just going to kind of barely peek out above the atmosphere and then come back down. So we won't be going too fast through it. So this is way more than enough. You don't even necessarily need a heat shield, but we're going to put one on just for fun. Uh, for the command pod, we will not be using this monopropellant, so we can get rid of that. That's going to give us a little more monopropellant. It's another type of fuel that we don't have the engines for right now, and we're not using um, so this is going to be what's returning when we have the rest of the craft we're going to want to separate this from the rest of the craft and for that purpose we use a stack decoupler which separates things in line like you see here okay let's give us a little more room here to build um, we're going to put our liquid fueled engine we're going to have a liquid fueled stage up here so let's uh, put some fuel tanks hold down the alt key allows you to copy we're going to put three of them because we are and we're going to stick our liquid-fueled engine, the new one we got, the LVT45 Swivel, uh, right below it. This liquid-fueled engine comes complete with a nozzle that is able to tilt, and that tilting is going to, it's called gimballing, and it's going to allow us to, uh, to steer a little better. And then we're going to separate this part from the bottom, which is going to get us up off the launch pad, and the stuff that's going to get us off the launch pad is just going to be a single hammer solid fuel booster. So it's a bigger booster than before. This is solid fueled rocket and this is the liquid stage. You can do this all in liquid staging if you want. It doesn't really matter. This is this is the easy part. Um, to make this 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 tube a bit more stable, we're going to put some fins on this guy. So let's put fins on the bottom. Uh, let's put uh, let's do three-way symmetry. That's fine. That's more than enough. And uh, I, I could put fins on this, uh, I will, because it's actually going to be harder con to control up top here. Uh, it's going to be, it's way easy to turn, and it's going to be kind of tough, uh, tough to control. Um, but it'll be no problem. All right, so that's good. Let's check our staging first. So check your staging, always check the staging. Absolutely always check it. So first thing that's going to happen is number four. The thing at the bottom here, it's going to launch our solid, or it's going to start our solid fuel booster. That's fine. It's going to run out of power. Then we're going to decouple it that's fine then we're going to start up our liquid fueled engine that's fine and then we're going to decouple that and then eventually we're going to launch our parachute so this is looking perfectly fine the decouplers kind of automatically create your staging for you almost so let's go ahead and launch this one and uh, we're not going to give these names because this is just this is just throwing it up um, okay so we'll, this is the last time we're going to launch something from this pile of dirt 
Now, if we right-click again and do the crew report, this time you see we're doing the same science experiment we did last time at the same location, and now, instead of 1.5 science, we get nothing. So, this is the, the, the science system at play here. Uh, we've also done an EVA report, but uh, what we haven't done from the launch pad is these, the temperature experiments. So let's log temperature. Let's do barometer. Um, and uh, we, we want to do them again, so just like the, uh, the command pod, we're going to do an EVA and take the data from these so that we can store them in the pod, and now this leaves up, frees up room to do more science on either side. Uh, we could do a mystery goo experiment, but unlike the other instruments, we cannot reset them, so we can only do it once in flight. And for this, I want to do one in space and one in the upper atmosphere. Okay. So, uh, the last thing I'll talk about is trajectory, and for this let's go in the map view and look at the, the lovely planet again, and in fact, let's just take a moment to think about trajectory. So, let's imagine we're coming at the surface of the planet, so let's say it's right here. So if I, if I just picture that the surface of the planet's right here, and the, uh, the atmosphere is kind of about this level. If we go straight up from the surface and come straight back down, at about this level, we're going to hit the atmosphere, and we're going to have all of this time to slow us down. So it's that much of slowdown right here. That much slowdown. Not bad, okay? So if you're not going too fast, this is probably going to be fine. And in fact, if you just kind of peek out of the atmosphere like we're about to do, this is going to be fine. We can go straight up and straight down in this case. However, if we go far out into space, then we're going to actually be traveling a lot faster coming into the atmosphere. And if you go too fast this much atmosphere may not be enough to slow you down, enough to launch your parachutes. So, how do you solve this problem? Well, you launch at a trajectory. So if you launch not straight up, but if you launch at an angle, and then come back down, you now enter the atmosphere at an angle, and now you go through this amount of atmosphere versus just that amount. So, you know, make a triangle. This side is longer than, than that side, so basically you, you give yourself more atmosphere to go through for braking. And so coming back to the to the map here, instead of launching straight up and down, which will be like straight out and then we're going to come straight down, we're going to launch at an angle. We're going to go to the right here uh, because this is east. This is the way the planet is moving, so the, you're already moving in that direction kind of. So we're going to go launch east and have a trajectory that's a nice arc right here. It's not vital for this time, like I said, but it's useful nonetheless. So we're going to enable SAS and uh, give ourselves a little countdown here. So... Five. Oh, oh, throttle to the max. It won't affect the solid rocket booster, but it actually comes into play for our liquid-fueled rocket. So, five, four, three, two, one, launch! Ooh, here we go! Okay, so we do want to start turning to the right, to the east, the 90 degrees, uh, as soon as possible. We don't want to do it too much. We don't want to do, we don't want to flip ourselves over. Now, that's we want to keep it more or less inside this yellow ring. Um, which we will talk about eventually, but not right now. You see the, the effects of going through the sound barrier, as you see there. It's pretty cool. Okay, we're done our first stage. Let's start up that liquid-fueled rocket, and now it's a little more difficult to control this. Uh, we will be throttling down a bit. We don't need... Ooh, man. Well, we can we gotta be real careful we don't go too fast. We're going to throttle a bit down. We're going a little fast here, so let's throttle way down. We don't need to be going that fast. And if we look, we're going to be absolutely fine getting out of the atmosphere. So we're getting a lot of heating. Let's let's slow ourselves down. <clears throat> so we're, at, we're actually going fast enough where we get atmospheric heating, but it's not too much, don't worry. We're in the upper atmosphere, I think, now. Let's, uh, no, we're going to wait for the crew report until space. But uh, these other instruments, we're going to do them now. We're in the upper atmosphere, so let's do a pressure scan. Uh, yeah, we're done that last stage, so we'll just get rid of that. And we'll do a temperature scan. And we'll do one of these mystery goo experiments. So we'll do one side, and then we'll do the other side when we're in space. So, upper atmosphere. The goo seems to be getting very cold now. All right, go goo. We'll see what's, what's different in space. So let's check our map view and look. Our apoapsis, or the highest point in our orbit, is saying 109. So we're above 100 kilometers. That should be in space. And in fact, we're going to pass the 70 kilometer mark in just a moment. Jeb is super happy because the music change indicates we're in space! Ooh. Hooray! We're in space! Cool! So we made it to space. Not too difficult to get into space. We're going to prepare for our re-entry, but before we do that, we're going to do a crew report from space. It says, it seems we are very much in space right now. The sky seems to be mostly below us. Very good, Jeb. Very good. 
Uh, we're also going to do the other science on the other side of the craft, so observe mystery goo, we'll do that one. <clears throat> it says the goo seems to have clumped into a sphere. It also seems to ha it also appears to have become brittle. Okay. Um, and uh, we get to do a barometer reading and a temperature gauge reading. So we're going to get a lot we're getting a lot of science for this. Uh, which is great because we can spend it to get even better uh, rocket parts and we can build something that gonna, is going to get us into orbit and that will be our next flight. But for now, we are almost at our apoapsis. Let's speed up time a bit so we get down there. And so now we are heading back down. <clears throat> so heading back down, we want to orient ourselves properly for re-entry. This means you want to point your heat shield at where you're going. And that's uh, the time, remember I said something about the, the yellow circle? Well, you have this... Note that you have this yellow circle without an X, and you have this yellow circle with an X. The difference is this yellow circle with an X is called the retrograde vector. It indicates that you're pointing in the direction that is opposite the way you're traveling. And in this, this is the prograde vector with the open circle. That means our nose is pointed in the direction we're heading, which is down. Uh, in this case, we want to be pointed at the retrograde vector, so our butt, or a heat shield, is pointed toward the atmosphere. And we, we have already entered the atmosphere, um, but we're not going too fast, so we're not going to get that much atmospheric heating. <clears throat> and if you look at our ablator percentage, I'm just going to keep it here. Oh, there's some atmospheric heating. Um, Re-entry heating. So I'll point, or keep myself pointed at the retrograde vector. What we, what we can actually do now is turn off SAS and aerodynamics. We'll kind of orient ourselves nicely. Um, you can't always do this, but in this case, we're perfectly balanced, so we're perfectly good. And you see it's using some of the heat shield, 0.05, but already we're done. That's it. That's all the heat shield we used. We had some entry atmospheric heating on, uh, on entry, but we're slowing down still. And our trajectory... Okay, well... Our trajectory was a nice a nice arc if you saw it before. Uh, so we're below uh, 300 meters a second. We can open our chute, and now we'll be fine. We'll safely land or safely splash down in the ocean. So let's uh, let's time warp once again. Let's get there. Do 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 do. Once we're about a thousand, well, this chute will open all the way and slow us down a lot. There we go. But keep going, keep going. We're at five or six meters a second, which is totally fine. And also, when I slow time down to normal, very slow. It's very slow. But that's fine. It's a nice gentle descent. Um, we can't do an, an EVA right now. You can't do an EVA when you're flying unless um, uh, unless you upgrade your astronaut. Oh, okay. There we go. That was kind of loud. Uh, but here we go, we're splashed down, and now we can do science here. Now, remember, we already have a crew report in here, we have these temperature gauges in here, but what we can do is the little trick, the EVA trick. We haven't done a report from the uh, oceans yet, so let's do an EVA from the water. Let's take that data from this side, uh, let's take the barometer data, and let's take a crew report. Then we're going to go back in, which stores all that, and we can do temperature reading, or uh, pressure reading, a temperature reading, and another crew report. So we got all the science we can get out of this. We squeezed it all out. Woo! Yay! So the happy dance, the happy spin. Yeah, it's amazing this thing still works. Um, and yeah, we completed our contract. So we went and did a whole bunch of things. So let's recover this vessel and see how much science we actually returned back. I imagine it was tons. Oh yeah, 89 science. We have just about 120, 119 science here. Um, nice, nice pieces of science here. Okay, uh, and we recovered 89.8% of the value. Not bad, not bad at all. Pretty cool. Jeb did not get any experience that time because he didn't. Um, yeah, the, the experience system for pilots are uh, is a bit complicated. Not the time to talk about it now. But now is the time to talk about the end of the episode, because that's where we are. So in this episode, we did actually quite a lot. We've started to accept some contracts. We put a vessel, we launched some vessel we um, uh, from the planet's surface. We launched the first vessel, and then we did another launch where we went into space. So we got into space, safely survived, and learned about the science system in Kerbal Space Program, which is vital. In next episode, we'll be doing... We'll be surmounting an obstacle that a lot of people have problems with, which is getting into orbit. A lot harder than it seems. So, hopefully, 
will get into orbit, and uh, you can you can learn a bit about that and a bit about orbiting, and as well as a bit about playing with your orbit, sort of playing with stuff and features in space. Um, so until then, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.